Bonjour à tous, Anne-Sophie de chez Studies Up. Euh, Aujourd'hui, on a l'honneur d'avoir euh, la représentante en fait de l'University of Newcastle en Australie, Robin. Hi Robin, how are you? <laughs> Hi Anne-Sophie, thank you. It's nice thank to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for, for having us today. And um, uh, Robin today is going to um, present the University of Newcastle that is located not far from Sydney in New South Wales in Australia. And then Robin will be able to answer a specific question to the students. So uh, Robin, welcome. Thank you again. And I'll let you uh, get on to your presentation and to find out a lot more about Newcastle that is a lovely location in Australia. Thank you. Thanks and Sophie. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Um, thank you. All good, sir, and Sophie, great. Um, just welcome to your Australian adventure in Newcastle. So as you can see from the amazing picture, this is, this is the, the most beautiful place, um, one of the most beautiful places in Australia to visit on the coast just north of Sydney. So as you can see in the map, we have Sydney and Newcastle is two hours north um, of, of Sydney. So very, very easy access for you to go down to Sydney for the weekend, but you're in the relaxed environment and regional town of Newcastle. In saying regional, we also have 600,000 people. So it, it's not uh, a very small town either, a very large um, city, the second largest in, in New South Wales. So the university at a glance, our ranking is 192 in the world. So we're one of the top universities um, in, in not only in Australia, but also in the, in the rankings around the world. We have 38,000 students, so rather a large university compared to the universities that you have here in, in France. And 6,400 of those are international students. So we have a really multicultural, um, diverse um, university. It's also very coastal, as you can see in the beautiful picture behind. Um, and I suppose most of you are business students um, that I'm talking to today. So as you can see in the bottom right corner of the picture, we have the um, accreditation. So we have the Equus and the AACSB, which just shows that, um, you know, we're, we're well accredited and we have very good programs um, at Newcastle. A very important point at the bottom here is the affordable living um, we're 16 to 46% cheaper for accommodation than Brisbane, Melbourne and Sydney. Um, so I suppose when you're looking at, you know, the cost of, of the, um, I suppose, your, your study abroad semester or your um, master program, then this is, I suppose, adds up to quite a bit um, over, over long term. Areas of study. So business and accounting and finance and communications, architecture, engineering, virtually anything you could want to study. And what's fantastic about our study abroad program is that you're able to choose subjects across the board. Um, as far as we're concerned at Newcastle, you can choose you know, one subject from, from any of those areas as long as you have the prerequisites for each subject. Um, very importantly, you would need to check at your home university to make sure those subjects would be um, accepted um, as part of when, you, when you're returning home that you would get those credits. So that's something very important to, to think about. Some of our popular courses. So these are very, I suppose, um, Australian focused. And if you're allowed at your home university to do some elective subjects, then here's a few that might be of interest to you um, at the Australian experience, oceans, um, just something a little bit um, different. So programs at a glance. So for one or two semesters, um, we have a February intake and 
finishing in June and then July um, to November. It's possible also at Newcastle for you to do a three or four courses uh, per semester and both are considered full time. Um, you can see the study abroad fees there. Um, and obviously we have um, discounts for partners um, as well. We can talk about the um, English requirements, as you can see, entry requirements. Um, if we have a partnership with, with your university, and I know it um, certainly at Poll we do, so um, this we can work through and Sophie at, um, with study, at Studies Up. Just a few photos and have a look at our beautiful Newcastle Callaghan campus, which is the second largest campus in Australia. Um, and have a look at the students, a very relaxed, great lifestyle, um, and often mostly outdoors with the fantastic climate that we have in, in Newcastle as well. So we have over 2 million trees planted at the Callaghan campus, very natural, lots of walks, um, and I suppose when you're thinking about architecture, <laughs> fantastic new building that we have in the centre of Newcastle. This is where the business, um, business faculty law is as well, so you would be studying at um, this campus. We, we do have a free shuttle bus going between the two campuses. It's about 20 minutes to our main campus. Um, so perhaps if you, you know, had a subject at the main campus, there's definitely the, the shuttle service that can take you back and forth. This is the beautiful view from that campus. Our Q building, so very, very modern, very new and fantastic facilities. Um, campus life. This is our main campus and virtually everything you could possibly want is, is on campus. So between medical, pharmacy, banks, um, cafes, restaurants, movies, um, you could almost virtually stay on campus and not leave. <laughs> um, but obviously, Newcastle is also a beautiful city to, to venture into. So incredible sporting facilities, 50, more, 50 metre indoor pool. We have a fantastic gym that the students um, uh, are at. Um, regularly six sporting ovals I mean virtually anything you could possibly want to uh, do at Newcastle Uni University you certainly could on campus accommodation I'll just go through this fairly quickly because I do have some nice pictures it just gives you an idea of all the different options of on-campus accommodation that we have um, if you're looking to do an application for for um, University of Newcastle, it would be also good to think about doing an application for accommodation because we need, um, you know, it, it's highly sought after um, and it's something that we encourage students doing an application to think about their accommodation, both on campus or off campus. So campus benefits, very safe and secure. We actually do have a bus um, that can take you back to, to your rooms, I suppose, after you've, if you've got late night um, um, classes and you're not comfortable walking back, well, we certainly have a, a mini bus and security that can take you back to your, to your, um, to your rooms. Through so here's just some photos and gives you a bit of an idea. You can see the price um one seventy eight fifty per person um to be in in accommodation which is self catered for. You, there's lots of different options between um, catering whether you wish to um, cater for yourself or have meals. A swimming pool there. The north and west, um, there's different options for accommodation. So this is a great way to, to be mixing with other students. Many of the Australian students are staying on campus as well. So it's um, a really great atmosphere for students. There's always something going on. There's always events or um, that you can join into as well. So clubs and societies, we have over 100. I suppose because we have such a large university, um, it gives the opportunities to have many more options as far as student run groups, whether it's sporting, cultural, um, social, academic and, and so forth. 
Okay, here's part of a, a group that part of the Newcastle Exchange Student Club uh, for both domestic and international students. And these are a few of the um, events that that students decided to go on last year. So there's plenty of options. This is something I would encourage you to to participate in. So living in, in Newey, as we call Newcastle, we shorten it because Australians like to shorten everything, um, all their words. So Newey, um, it's a very authentic um, experience for you. Laid back coast, um, very, very relaxed atmosphere, lots of cafes, microbreweries, lots of bars. There's always something happening um, in Newcastle. So here's just a few photos that I'm going to show you which gives you a little bit of an idea of, of what Newcastle's all about, if you like surfing. Beautiful beaches. So even in winter, um, you know, it gets down to maybe 15, 16 degrees, so certainly not as cold as, as France or Europe is. The ocean baths, so if you don't want to swim in the surf, you can certainly swim in the fresh ocean water, but in the baths. beautiful lighthouse. Whales at certain times of the year, the whales are going up and down the coast. The bogey hole is somewhere where our students hang out a lot in summer. Great spot um, to be. You have the black butt reserve. So of course you want to see kangaroos, koalas, wombats, uh, not far from our university. And 20 minutes away, we have the Stockton sand dunes. So a lot of good fun and as you can see lots of lots of things happening. The Hunter Valley wineries is also not far away at all. Great walking trails if you're an outdoor person and what a better place I don't think you can find a better place to have a picnic. <laughs> also loads of events happening in in Newcastle. Lots of festivals, whether you're into car racing, whether you're into surfing, the night markets are on regularly. Um, if you like soccer and, and rugby, then there's plenty of options and lots of matches. But I would encourage you as well to see an AFL match, which is the Australian football, um, if you're going to Australia. Definitely something very, very different to any football that you would see in France. And here we are. The Study Abroad and Exchange Guide, um, you can download this. Also, Anne Sophie at Studies Up will be able to assist you with any further questions that you may have um, about studying in, in Newcastle. So thank you so much. I'll pass you back to Anne Sophie and um, hopefully look forward thank to you. seeing you there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um... Robin, I wish we could be there right now. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yes, nice and lovely. And yes, the wells actually will happen uh, uh, during winter. So um, it's going to be around October, November, I think. Isn't yes, it? correct. Usually? Yes, it's always correct. fantastic to, to see. So some of the students uh, that are here with us today and that are going to depart for July intake will have the chance probably to watch uh, the whales over there. So that sounds great. Um, any specific question, anyone that you may have for Robin? Um, Robin, you mentioned the accommodation and um, uh, I know that um, Newcastle is uh, lucky enough to have a lot of different residents on campus. So I think that's actually a, a fantastic opportunity for the student to be uh, on campus. Um, I think uh, it's true since COVID, a lot more Australian even are on campus than before. Uh, I think that's something uh, that you, you can confirm as well. And uh, I think it's a real Australian experience for overseas students as well to be able to, uh, to be on campus accommodation. Uh, and uh, it's a real way as well to, to meet other, other students. Absolutely, and sophie Being on campus, I think I think it just gives you that opportunity to be very social. You get to meet other students very, very quickly um, from Australia and from all around the world. And there's always something going on. There's so many social yeah. events. So I think that's really important that students um, are involved and participate uh, to get to meet as many other students as and be involved as much as possible. 
And, and that's true when you say that there are so many clubs and societies uh, during the orientation week, what you call the O week. That's yes. where actually the, the, the locals and the, the ongoing students will be welcoming the new one and offering them opportunities to sign up uh, to uh, different clubs and, and so on. And it's true that uh, we know that Australia is so outdoor oriented thanks to the climate. It's true yeah. that a lot of... Uh, of students uh, will join some uh, sports clubs and uh, and so on. So I think this is uh, also very important. Um, in terms of um, of jobs uh, in in Newcastle, uh, how how would you say is it at the moment? Do you have any trends or uh, any tips or information you would you would have maybe? Uh, because some students sometimes they're like, yeah, but Newcastle might be a bit too small. But like you mentioned, it's quite large, quite big. It's not in the middle of nowhere. Don't worry. Um, maybe you have information uh, about jobs. About jobs, absolutely. So it's very possible for you to have a part-time job while you're studying. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. You're allowed to work up to 48 hours over a fortnight. Um, and that, generally speaking, a casual position, you would make around 17, 18 Australian dollars yeah. uh, per hour. Um, and that, that just helps, I suppose, um, paying for the, the accommodation and living expenses while you're there. Um, you know, there's we the university is working very, very closely um, with companies. So we do um, have options for you posted, you know, jobs up on the up on the boards and so forth. Um, but it is relative relatively easy, I suppose, um, yeah. to have and, a, have that part time job. And then when you apply for a job, uh, it's uh, it's really you you go and see the the in the shop you go directly to the restaurant or the cafes and and drop off your your cv isn't it absolutely then yeah. obviously you would have to go through a you know interview process and, and yeah. um, go from there but yes you can certainly go and see the the cafes restaurants um at the moment you know they're always looking for for staff so yeah because like robin mentioned uh the actually the length of the uh, number of hours that you will be able to work uh, from uh, July 1st actually uh, um, expand. So it's going uh, to show you that uh, you are able to find a job quite easily. And I think that's a great opportunity for overseas students to uh, be able to have a job on the side, like you mentioned. Um, and also maybe Robin, you can mention the fact that uh, uh, contact hours at the universities is a lot less compared with France. So that actually allow to have a job on the side easily. Yes, correct. Gen depending on what subjects are chosen, mm. obviously. Um, yes. But we say it would be roughly around 20 contact hours um, per week. Could yeah. be less, could be a little bit more. Um, so obviously you're expected to do work at home um, on top of that, but there, there is certainly time for you to be able to have a, a casual job as well. Yeah, which is good. I think it's a it's a very really good point being uh, uh, for those going to Australia to know that for this country it's not difficult uh, to to have a job and it can be an, uh, on and off campus as well. So it's not restricted. So I think it's give them a lot of uh, opportunity. We've got Celia that drop a, a message uh, and she said, hello, can you please explain the different requirements for the English degrees? There were two different ranges. Um, and to remember, Celia is a, a prospect student that is willing to uh, come maybe for a semester uh, at Newcastle. Um, so um, maybe you can explain. I'm just going to double check. Celia, are you a um, um, bachelor or a master student? Because I think this is where the English is different. Um, if you can just um, let me know uh, in the chat or even you can switch off your microphone. Huh? It's uh, my bachelor. Okay, so the English requirement will be a bit lower. Maybe uh, Robin, you can confirm that if she's coming for undergraduate units. Undergraduate units, it's, well, the IELTS equivalent of, of 6.5 six. and 6, yes. Yeah, that's right. So that's right. So um, and like we mentioned, for study abroad, you can take up to uh, four units. So this gives you back uh, the equivalent of 30 uh, ECTS, uh, les crédits européens. Um, yes, where is Celia from is 
silly of which which university or school uh i'm not quite sure let me double ah, check sorry that's okay no that's fine <laughs> she's been in touch with my um uh, with my colleague and uh, uh celia maybe celia you can just confirm what, what you're doing right now if you don't mind And we've got Alexandre Roland. Hello, I would like to do business, international business and marketing courses. Would it be in the Callaghan or, uh, or uh, Newcastle City? It would be at Newcastle campus. City. It will be, the, our business faculty is in the city campus. However, you know, depending on what subjects you have, you could certainly, you know, look at choosing subjects across the board. So you may have a subject at the Callaghan campus as well. Um, for like I mentioned, for us, it's not a, an issue as to which type of subjects you choose. So you might choose three subjects in business and then choose an elective subject that may be at the Callahan campus. But if you're choosing um, all business, it would be in the city campus because that's where our faculty is. Yeah, usually um, because for him, uh, usually the, the school um, approve actually the, the possibility for them to uh, to pick and choose uh, such and such units. So, no, but that's good to know. And the Celia says she's at the, the university, uh, Nanterre University, so at bachelor level. So she just wants to do a semester abroad. So that's um, that's easy, yeah. Fantastic. And um, for, yeah, so the, the business units, uh, it could be uh, sometime also in Calagan or not at all? Um, business, the faculty of business is, is in the city centre, yeah. so okay. most, I would say, yeah, 90% yeah. of, of the subjects are there. Okay. But then nothing, like you mentioned, there is a bus, there is a shuttle going between the two campuses, so students, they can still um, be on campus accommodation can be on the on enjoy the, the activities uh, on the campus and still go to the class to the other campus. It's easy. Yes, really. yeah. absolutely. It's very easy. Yeah. yeah. So that's great. Um, what else? Do you have any other specific question, guys, you may have? So we spoke about the, yes, uh, maybe about, you know, you mentioned about the contact hours. It can be 12, 16, 20 hours a week, depending on the class and the project and on, on which uh, which topic you, you've been selected. Um, saying that, students are able to uh, do their own agenda as such. They can uh, usually um, do their own planning for the semester. And I think it's um, a real plus uh, also to be able to, um, to have a job uh, on the side, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those subjects can be running two or three times a week. So yeah. it's a matter of picking and choosing when you wish to do those subjects and, yeah. and so forth. Um, so it's, I suppose, flexible at the beginning. Once you've chosen your subjects, then um, you, I suppose you can work around those hours. Um, yeah. But sure, there's general, generally speaking, there, there's certainly time to have that uh, casual, casual job. For yeah. Sure. So there are a lot of flexibility because, you know, in France, usually, well, the business school or, or, or the engineering school are a lot smaller. We can't compare with a big university like Newcastle. And usually they've got their planning. They can't pick and choose. So it's quite different. So when you say that to a French student that uh, <laughs> there are different slots available during the week and you're the one that's doing your own agenda, uh, it's a bit different. It's the other way around, really. <laughs> so it that's very different. Yes. Not all subjects have, you know, the different slots but many of them do yeah, um, and yeah. I would say most Australians have part-time jobs as well so yeah. that's just a different I suppose cultural um, aspect to it that Australian students generally are working and, and studying um, yeah. perhaps where in France that's not the case. <clears throat> Talking about the the Australian and maybe the, the the culture over there being being a French student what what do they have to expect or maybe do you have few tips you could give them so um, I know we often say that the Australians are really laid back, they're really relaxed, really welcoming, which I can confirm, uh, but uh, maybe you have two or three uh, uh, words to, to express, uh, how, would you, uh, how would you say an Australian 
uh, looks like? How, how is he? Uh... <laughs> in, well, in, in Australia, I suppose, as you say, Australians are very laid back. As you saw in the photo, you know, students are sitting around the cafes, they're in their t-shirts and shorts, they're feeling yeah. very comfortable. Um, it's not as formal as perhaps as what the study yeah. is in France. It's <laughs> not as structured. Um, however, you know, we're still 190 is yeah. our rank in the world so we're we're certainly um structured to to that point and and very good at what we do perhaps um i would say the lifestyle is, is, the, is the difference and australians are very very open so feel free to reach out don't be scared don't hold back join totally. in as many yeah. as many groups um activities as you possibly can and and you'll be very welcomed um in the orientation week you have opportunities to to meet with um with other students and the staff are there to support you so absolutely you're going to have a fantastic time <laughs> and if i can say like you mentioned the the methodology, the way of teaching is different. The way of, uh, uh, it, it's true, it's a, let, it's a lot different compared with France, which it's what we call in pédagogy inversée. Donc, vous avez moins d'heures de cours et plus de travail en individuel et en groupe à côté. Donc, ce qui peut être assez différent de la façon uh, dont vous étudiez actuellement en France. And I think that's something that is quite different and that allow also to look like it's laid back in Australia. But like you mentioned, I mean, Australian universities are very well ranked and it's just a, a different way of teaching and um, approaching the education system that is a, a bit different. Um, but it's true that the results need to be there, of course. And, um, and because there are less contact hours, sometimes I say to students, hang on, watch out. You have to prepare the course. You have to prepare for next week's. Um, so be aware of it and don't think that you can go and surf all day long. <laughs> you have... <laughs> You need to balance and it can be a bit different because it, again in, in France it's the other way around so it's always interesting and it, uh, it takes time sometimes for some student to uh, just to adjust this way um, and like you mentioned as well and it's true when uh, when I visited few uh, campuses in Australia is that teacher teachers and students speak with their first name uh, and it's quite relaxed you know um, so it's a bit more formal uh, in France indeed, yes, I think it's different. Very different, yes, and, and I suppose that is another shock, yes, to call teachers by their first names and to be able to have a, a conversation, a very relaxed conversation with, with your teacher, professor, yeah. um, and ask for advice and, you know, often the, the teachers know exactly who you are and what you're doing and... Um, you know, some of some of the professors have been here in France as well, so um, they have that connection as well. As as well. Yeah. So and and like you say, also don't 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 be afraid. Don't hesitate uh, to actually go and speak to the teacher if something is not clear for you. If you haven't understood something, and there are some specific staff as well, isn't it, on on campus that can help you to. Um, to uh, have a look at your first assessment uh, and uh, and that can give you extra supports um, if uh, if need be. Yes, um, the, everything will be explained, I suppose, in the orientation, yeah. but um, we have an international office and there's staff there to assist you every yeah. step of the way or if you're feeling uncomfortable about something. Or um, homesick. I mean, sometimes, you know, and we have to say that that can totally happen and it's totally human and uh, that's something not to be missed as well and to be aware that you know you're, you're allowed as well to uh, when you're so far away to nearly take 24 hours to get there yes I know but you know these days with um with all the I suppose social network social <laughs> network yeah thanks that's it be um zoom and, and well, what's Skype, up and all of that now but yeah what's up it's, yeah. it's very easy to be in contact with home yeah. um but you will be so busy hopefully you know oh, yes. making new friends and being you know apart from your studies which you obviously are there to do very well with your studies and and get your credits uh, for your home when you come back home but it's also to have an amazing time and you, you know these are these are skills that you will form um, that you can never never learn at university or at school you know being in a, another country speaking you know a different language um, and you know 
you know, standing on your own two feet, I think this is a fantastic opportunity and, and experience. And every student that, uh, that has come back um, that I've spoken to has returned to, to France, um, has always just said it's been the best time of my life. Exactly. It's That's what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> because usually they're like, hang on, it was too short. It's such amazing over there. Uh, it's so nice. And time was too short to explore everything. You have to remember that Australia is uh, 16 times the size of France. So you have a lot to explore as well uh, over the weekend and uh, when you've got breaks as well. Uh, but it's through it's such a great opportunity. Uh, and again, uh, University of Newcastle has got such well-ranked, uh, fantastic facilities. I think you will be just amazed and you will love your time there. Uh, and, and like you mentioned, you can spend a lot of time there with everything that is organized. I, I remember there is an outdoor uh, movie, isn't it? Cinema as well. Yes, yes. And yeah. um, the summer months, there's also an, a bar that we have, you know, um, with bands and music. I think it holds yeah. up a thousand people. So, you know, there's always so much happening. And and sometimes some students yeah. said to me that on on the on your campus, there is so much to do that, in fact, there is almost too much to do <laughs> because yeah. there is always music. There is always yeah. things happening and that's really lively and I think that's fantastic for international students to to be able to live in a in a real uh, Australian campus and have all all of that offered to them during the semester I think that's that's great we've got Aditi that has got um, a question is it possible to go to New Zealand during our semester well, yes. During the semester, well, we have an international airport at Newcastle. So from Newcastle, you can perhaps head off for a weekend. You know, we have direct flights to Melbourne to, um, well, there's a train down to Sydney. Yes. It's very quick in a couple of hours. Um, but to other destinations, you could fly to, to New Zealand, um, depending on perhaps um, in school holidays, perhaps if you have a long weekend, perhaps yeah. even just for the weekend. Sure. And it's true, a lot of Australian, well, people don't think there is ski in Australia and snow, but there is not far from Melbourne. But saying that a lot of Australians got great package to go and ski in New Zealand and they uh, easily take the, the, the flight to go to New Zealand for, uh, for skiing there for a few days, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think Queenstown in New yes. Zealand. Where exactly. All the um the skiing the is about yeah, yeah which is incredible but, but also in new south wales i mean there's we have ski resorts as well um just between i suppose heading f further south from sydney um there's ski resorts so if you're into skiing then but i mean in france you have the incredible you have the alps you have the pyrenees to ski go to australia to yeah. experience something else <laughs> exactly the great Barrier reef or the red uh, yeah. The Red Center, I mean, there is so much to see that you will never, ever see anywhere else. I think uh, just enjoy so much Australia. You've got so much to see in such a short time already. So, uh, so that's perfect. Um, I think that's great. Uh, any last question? Maybe, Celia, if you've got any other question, because afterwards we'll have the group of the, the Pretty Patches students going to, to, to July and then we will keep going. So... Um, I will stop the recording unless you've got a, a last question, Celia, or is it all okay for you so far? If you can just me, drop me a, a little message or, or even switch on your microphone. It's all clear. Well, thank you so much, Celia, as well. Thank you, everyone. I will stop the recording and we keep going afterwards. Thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you, Robin, for your time. And um, we'll see you uh, very soon. Cheers. Thanks, Sen Sophie. Thank you, Thank everyone. You.